Love this podcast? Support this show through the ACAST supporter feature. It's up to you how much you give, and there's no regular commitment. Just click the link in the show description to support now. Who's ready for a celebration? I know I am. And you cannot have a celebration without gifts. Okay? So for the six-year anniversary of Duke Loves Rouseland podcast, I have a special gift for you. Head over to PaneraBread.com or your local Panera Bread location. And I want you to sign up for the Unlimited Sip Club. Check this out. Normally, it's $8.99 per month. But if you sign up today, you're going to get your first three months absolutely free. What this means, once every two hours, you have your choice of hot coffee, iced coffee, or hot tea. Okay? You can do it the way you want to do it with your sweeteners and your dairy or dairy alternatives. The main idea is once every two hours, you get a beverage from Panera Bread. Don't forget, this is the place that has all of the fancy sandwiches, the delicious salads, the bowls, pastries, you name it. Panera Bread, awesome place. But for you to get the beverage, all you got to do is sign up for the Unlimited Sip Club. It is worth it, I'm telling you, especially when you're getting it for free for the first three months here. Visit PaneraBread.com or your local Panera Bread location for more information. And now, without further ado, let's party, baby. The sixth year anniversary of the Duke Loves Wrestling podcast. Hit it. This is what we have here, folks. To the only show that matters. The cream of the crop. Duke loves wrestling. And there is no one that does it better than your host. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. The Duke. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Welcome to a special edition of the Duke Loves Wrestling Podcast. That is right, my brothers, my sisters, my my aliens, everybody in the entire galaxy. It is the six-year anniversary of the Duke Loves Wrestling Podcast. I am so happy. I'm so thrilled. I'm so thankful that so many of you have supported the show through the years and continue to come back. You share the show. You talk about it. You want to debate me about certain topics and all that good stuff. It's it's really, really cool. I really appreciate all of you out there. And, you know, reflecting on what this episode is going to be, I was like, okay, I'm going to get this big wrestling star, and I'm going to get this person, and I'm going to get all these folks. And, and then I said, you know something? Why don't I just strip this down? Because one of the things that you, the listeners, continue to to give me feedback on is just the fact that you love the normal conversations that happen on the show. You love to hear me interact with people and you learn something new about them and it, you know, allows you to be aware of who's out there. And I was talking to Lavelle Porter, you know, the well-respected Lavelle Porter uh, from blackrabbit.com, WrestleZone, and he said something really interesting to me. He said, "Hey, why don't you reach out to Adrian at Middle Kingdom Wrestling? And since he was your very first guest ever, first person you ever interviewed on this show, wouldn't it be cool to have him back for this episode, for this anniversary? And I said, damn, you know, that's a, that's a great idea. So I was able to um, reach out to Adrian's people, and I had to negotiate with them because, you know, Adrian's all the way in China and he's a very important person running the number one wrestling promotion in China. One of the top wrestling promotions in the world, Middle Kingdom Wrestling China. Um, so Adrian's a busy guy, but I was able to, you know, make some promises that I would I would be a, a good guy and maybe I would um, collaborate with some of the folks on the roster with other projects and what have you. Because Adrian, you know, he twisted my arm a little bit, but we were able to make it work. So without further ado, literally the man who was my very first guest on the Duke Loves Wrestling podcast six years ago, and yes, he's been back before, but this is a little different at these circumstances here. Welcome back and really happy anniversary to you, Mr. Adrian Gomez of Middle Kingdom Wrestling. What's going on there, Adrian? Hi, Duke. Glad to be back on your show and uh, happy sixth anniversary. I'm glad to see uh, how much your show has uh, has grown and uh, 
to see how much has changed between us, I guess, in the last six years. Although I have been on your show uh, a few times between then, but uh, it's still great to uh, to be on for this particular occasion, your sixth year anniversary of uh, the Duke Loves Wrestling uh, show. I really, first of all, I appreciate that, Adrian. Thank you very much. And it's funny because you and I have really, we've grown up together in this wrestling world, so to speak. I mean, when you were on my show initially, you were, you were still pretty early in the process of building Middle Kingdom Wrestling. And of course, me, I think technically speaking, you were either on my third or fourth episode. I got to go back and double check that. So I was still, you know, really fresh when it comes to podcasting. But here we are six years later, and, and no doubt Duke Loves Wrestling is one of the top pro wrestling podcasts in the world, and you're running one of the top wrestling promotions in the world, Middle Kingdom Wrestling. So it's just funny how you know, our, our paths have kind of mirrored each other in our own worlds there, but we found a way to continue to support each other throughout the years, and it's really something special. So I really appreciate you for all you've done to help me on, on my end here. Well, that's what it's all about, you know. Um, there's a lot of fans of wrestling, and that's awesome. They're the ones who make, you know, who makes this, who make this business sustainable. Um, and there's also a lot of those fans, um, like you and me, who uh, are fans of professional wrestling, would like to be able to do something in this business. Um, and even fewer that go out, go on, and try to act do it um and those people such as us uh definitely need to find uh not only find our you know our our appropriate step into the business but also need to find a way to uh keep us from you know falling off and, and supporting each other and that's what it's really all about look when you put it like the way you've put it when you say like uh We've stayed in contact. We've kept in touch um, pretty much since the beginning. You say your show's six years old. Uh, Middle Kingdom Wrestling is uh, approaching uh, seven years old. Um, and it's great to be able to say, you know what? This is a friend that I had, I've had uh, uh, because of wrestling and because we're both trying to do something in wrestling. We keep each other up. We're there for each other. You know what's funny about you, Adrian? And, and this is something that, I respect and I love about you. This is your character 100%. And it's something that I tell people about when they ask me, hey, man, how do you, how do you build a brand um, in wrestling? How do you do it? And I always say, you know, there's this guy, Adrian Gomez. You know, he's a, he's a Latino American who moved to China and he, he's built this wrestling promotion from nothing, right? He's built this promotion. He's handling all the the getting the word out and what have you. I said, one of the things that this guy did is he went online and he would go into the wrestling groups and message anyone and everyone that seemed like they had half a brain and encourage them to check out his wrestling promotion. I said, this guy would spend hours, weeks, months, years at a time, just getting the word out about his product. And it worked on me. You know what I mean? It was something that was like, wow, this guy, because even before you and I interacted, Adrian, I saw your posts. I can't remember what group it was initially, but I saw your posts and I was like, man, this guy really is pushing this product. And then when you finally reached out to me personally, I was like, dude, come on my show. And then we just figured it out. But it's funny because you had a dream and you were, you were so serious about making this thing a reality that you just never gave up and you kept putting it out there you kept pushing it you kept improving it's a hell of a journey that you've had there with middle kingdom wrestling adrian thank you uh now you've reminded me yeah of the early days when especially when we uh we first got our video product out and we had something to present and yeah i did you know everything i i used every single resource mostly uh as long as it was a uh, cost efficient which it preferably free to market my uh, my product. And what we did was, uh, what I did was, like you said, I went into every group, I went into every single corner of the internet. Uh, and I just could, I mean, I would, I would say I, I couldn't, for about two years in the early uh, middle kingdom wrestling, for about two, 
the first two years, I would say, I uh, I just had like rapid, like 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 my hand was just never stopped copy pasting messages. Uh, just try to get you know try to get uh, writing up as much as I could about my journey about wrestling in China and just you know going into the deepest uh, corners of the internet just to get this thing out in front of more people's eyes. And um, I have to say, now that you bring that up, dude, uh, I'm quite happy now to that, uh, you know, that, that's not to say that our mark, you know, I've stopped marketing, I've stopped promoting uh, Middle Kingdom Wrestling. Uh, on the contrary, I would say we're doing, uh, you know, we're doing it in a much more professional way in a much more efficient way uh, with an actual strategy as far as like, um, you know, consulting with marketing people and putting in the budget to promote Middle Kingdom wrestling. But in those early days, uh, I'm not sure I could keep, I'm not sure I could have, uh, I could keep doing it uh, like uh, now, like I could do it then, because, um, you know, that was a very mentally exhausting process, uh, just trying to get MKW out there to more people so that, you know, and, but thankfully it has led me to uh, meeting uh lots of early onboard supporters and friends such as yourself and others that have grown uh, uh attracted to what I was doing and wanted to support and wanted to help and wanted to provide any kind of resource they could to help MKW grow to what has become now and now we have a team I don't have to do that anymore I can focus on the more important parts of it that's not to say that's not important but I would say I would like to say that people who are, have a more professional background in marketing, now we got those people working for us. Now we got we can invest in like marketing campaigns and things like that to get the word out uh, instead of doing it uh, in such a, uh, I guess you could say a tedious way of like getting into groups and promoting it and and just kind of cold messaging people who are wrestling fans and uh, to check out our product. But now we don't have to do that anymore because we've grown to such a level where uh, and we're so, and I'm really blessed to be in that position. And I'm glad that I can focus on, I guess you could say the more fun parts of wrestling. Um, but that actually was fun. I'll just say that. That was fun. Not sure I could, could have kept that up this whole time, but the first two years was, uh, as you said, um, I was in like every group just, just trying to get the word out about Chinese wrestling. Well, it's, it's, it's funny because. You know, at first it's like, all right, what, what the hell is this guy talking about? Wrestling in China? Who, who does? No, no one's paying attention to wrestling in China. But over time, it was your consistency and your enthusiasm about your own product where it's like, I, I respect that this person is laying it all out there trying to build this thing. Who, who doesn't understand that? I mean, when we talk about the most successful people in the world, a lot of folks are self-made. A lot of folks are, are people who understand that you're not going to achieve your goals if you're not putting in the time. I don't care what your goals are. You have to put the time in. A basketball player has to shoot X amount of baskets every single day in order to improve their shooting ability. You know what I mean? In, in this case, for you to market your company, which is all the way over there, and really, you're trying to get it out to the world. You're not, you're not trying to just market to people in China because your wrestlers are from all over the world. You have a global product. So the fact that you were in all these different wrestling groups, spreading the gospel of Middle Kingdom wrestling, um, it was really, really interesting to see. And, and really, I, I built a, a tremendous amount of respect for you because of that, because I understood that grind. Six years later for me, Adrian, I'm at a point now where my catalog, these wrestlers that I interviewed and these personalities I interviewed early on, who, you know, I may have only gotten a couple of listens back then, that catalog now is going through the roof because some of these folks have turned into big stars. And, you know, a prime example of this would be somebody mm -hmm. like um, Faith the Lioness. You know, I interviewed her almost four years ago. Now she's Nikita Lions in the WWE. And, you know, she's trending on Twitter every every time she's out there because she has an amazing figure and she can get some things done in the ring. She has a martial arts background, but people are going completely nuts over her. And it's like, 
this this weird random interview I did with her so many years ago is now one of the most listened to episodes that I've had over the past year. And it's like, I did that thing like four years ago. <laughs> and it's and it's hit now in a way that it didn't hit back then. Do you find your catalog doing something similar? Yeah. You know what's interesting is that um I there was a there were two instances, I would say. I'm gonna say two particular things things that really uh, um, gave us a, a spike, I guess you could say, in viewership that happened in the mainstream of wrestling. One of them was uh, about a year and a half into MKW, uh, we did have a Chinese wrestler a Hong Kong, uh, from, from Hong Kong, uh, uh, Hong Kong wrestling, his name is Ho Ho Loon. And he uh, wrestled for MKW, he's a big part of uh, Asian wrestling scene. Um, and, um, you know, he had the opportunity to go to the WWE tryout, uh, which right at the time when he went to the WWE tryout, um, of course, we noticed the massive amount of view viewership toward, you know, in the interest of Hoho. Um, furthermore, down the line, there was a company uh, called OWE, which made a partnership uh, at the at the at the inaugural press event for uh, All Elite Wrestling, Impact, uh, All Elite AEW. I think they did like a parade on New York and like on the strip in New York and Las Vegas. Uh, I think that's the way they announced the company, AEW. Anyway, one of the main things that they did was they brought a wrestling company from China that had just opened. Now this wrestling company from China uh, is not MKW. It was an upstart, which opened with a, a massive amount of capital um, called OWE, um, Oriental Wrestling Entertainment. And um, AEW announced that they're gonna bring all these Chinese wrestlers um, from uh, like a Shaolin Temple background. Um, unfortunately, that relationship seems, I don't I mean, I can't say uh, exactly why uh, things didn't work out between them, but yeah, when that was announced, that also was able to benefit MKW because now people were looking at, okay, what's MK, what's Chinese wrestling like? And at the time, and I, I wanna say at the time actually still is, if you look at Chinese pro wrestling uh, on Google or any search engine, Bing, uh, if that's your thing, um, or uh, you, and of course on YouTube or anywhere, the number one professional wrestling organization is MKW. So if you look at anything, on the subject of Chinese wrestling, uh, it, uh, and whether you you format it as Wrestling China Pro or Pro Wrestling China or Chinese wrestler or Chinese pro wrestling, you're gonna find MKW. So yes, um, there are some instances where something happens in the business that you know that that creates a lot of buzz, and in turn that will result in. Uh, and it increased the sudden, a sudden spikes in viewership for MKW. And, um, and in turn, uh, some of those do become uh, long-term fans. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, you know, it's refreshing to know that your hard work in the early days can continue to be appreciated. Um, you know, shout out to Ho Ho Loon. I, I remember. I remember when wwe had the tryouts over there and then eventually he was picked up to be part of a tournament and then they gave him a, a, a contract and to this day he's still doing um wrestling all over the world including in the united states that doesn't happen without the type of exposure that he had from folks like yourself over at middle kingdom wrestling so you're really changing lives and launching careers and setting people up for a tremendous amount of success just by having a place where they can go and not only learn how to be stars, but also continue to grow brands, because that's something that I think is missed here. Um, just about everyone that I've spoken to from Middle Kingdom Wrestling, and I've featured you know, a, a good portion of the roster through the years, they all have their own brands as well, which is really, really interesting. I mean, you look at a guy like Ash, the most handsome actor in all of Asia, right? I mean, this guy's a movie star, and and he's out there uh, being a badass wrestler. On top of that, um, I, Queen Marie, who I just had on recently, she she has a, a fashion line that she's launching, and 
she's also this this professional dancer and all these other things but middle kingdom wrestling is where her heart is the most which is really really interesting to to hear why do you think you're able to cultivate relationships where people are so loyal to you and that promotion on top of everything else like we keep talking about the early days a lot of those people like ash like big sam um you know we were friends first i would say i mean we got to know each other through wrestling we got to know each other through mkw and yeah like there was we were able to build like a friendship as far as you know we're wrestling fans. we're trying to get this thing off the we're trying to get this thing off the ground we want mkw to grow to be you know um to be something where it's not necessarily just like you know uh just something they they do from time to time but possibly something that you know can uh benefit them professionally um and i think uh that foundation that original foundation of mkw where everybody <clears throat> uh really i feel like everybody felt like they had uh uh in that in that original period the first those two years I was talking about felt like they had a stake a real stake in this company now of course i was always uh the boss the promoter the booker and all that but um at the same time everybody felt like they had like a stake in it that that made them feel like this is also theirs and as time went on um even if with the growth of the company and you know and you could and the company has uh you know uh had to had to had to professionalize itself more and make proper roles for people <clears throat> proper roles for people job titles and so on even with all that where the company has grown to become uh you know an actual functioning company with the you know with with its product with the wrestling school with a marketing team with a writing a writing team and all that it still retains some of those those initial relationships that we all had uh we all tried our best to get this thing off the ground and the original group the original team they all feel like they had a stake in it and in actually um really i mean i have to thank them because um it made it feel like it wasn't just like i have to get this successful so i can keep this alive it was like everybody wants to keep it alive everybody wants to keep this going forward nobody wants to see this fail so we had those early days that i think have uh brought us to where we are now and i'm really thankful for a lot of the original people like uh like you like you said ash and, and um big sam and and home one and others that I'm sure I'm missing people um beast face uh, a lot of people who are like we all felt like we had a piece in it yeah I'm I'm forever thanked your production value has gone through the roof adrian i mean middle kingdom wrestling there's no two ways about it it's just a beautiful looking product um how does that feel to to be able to go from something that looked like a regular for lack of a better term independent wrestling promotion to now looking so slick in polish just like you said it, you you had to grow behind the scenes professionally you had to grow as a company and and really start um making sure you had well defined roles and things like that get more professional as you described it your product looks a lot more professional how does it feel to take that leap and be the same company because you don't normally see the same company build up to this point um well thank you about uh about the product uh, about the production of the product now really um that is a really huge thing for me personally um i feel that um if we can make something look good then we do it if there is a, an opportunity to to you know put a little bit more money into the lighting then we do it if there is an opportunity to get a for example like a lighting scaffold or so, or 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 uh um or an entrance set then we do it but that's not to say that we don't have shows where actually we don't have much production at all but um in those shows um i 
have I've actually chosen to to uh, represent our product by the shows where we do have the production to make it look very nice on camera. That's very important to me. If the show, there's a lot of shows where people actually ask me, wrestlers themselves, they say, "Hey, Adrian, uh, when are we going to release my match from so and so show?" I say, I think to myself, well, that show didn't really have the greatest production because of the resources available at that time. It could be um, budget restraints or how much, uh, you know, a sponsor was willing to pay for something. Um, and I say, well, you know, we might get it out, but it's not a priority because for me, I want to get out the stuff that makes us look uh, the best that we can possibly be. Um, given the, the nature of, of, of business, not every show is uh, created equal regarding uh, production costs. So one thing that I've been able to do is we've actually had several shows that we haven't shown, but the shows that I choose to show, the shows that I want people to look at MKW and look at Middle Kingdom Wrestling and look at what we are and, 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 and how far we've come, those are the shows I'll put out there. Because for me, I want people to see our best step forward because um, if I, uh, um, you know, I'm happy to let our guys wrestle um, on like, I guess you could call them like a spot show or just like a, a smaller show and just so they can get experience. But uh, for me, uh, when I want to represent, when I want to represent some, when I want to show something that represents Middle Kingdom wrestling, uh, I really try my best to make sure uh, we, it was a show that I'm proud to show from a production point of view. Not to take away from the matches, but it's been fantastic matches that happen, uh, when we don't have, uh, all the, all the bells and whistles, uh, surrounding the wrestling ring. But, um, it, if there are those bells and whistles, then trust me, uh, those are the shows that I'm going to prioritize to show first to people because that's an important perception production you know one of the things that i've noticed over the past year is that you have really stepped it up in terms of positioning middle kingdom wrestling as being a type of uh, ambassador a goodwill ambassador to help bridge the gap between governments um you know i've noticed that you've you've had some chinese officials you've had american officials you've you've Put things together in a way where you're, you're trying to use pro wrestling to, to, again, bridge that gap, make sure that people continue to keep the lines of communication open um, so that we all can continue to, to live a safe and prosperous life. What made you start doing that, Adrian? Because it's, it's very shrewd and, and, quite frankly, I support it. I think it's very smart of you to um, position the company and, and, and allow it to be utilized in this you know, for lack of a better term, peacekeeping manner. <laughs> um, well, yeah, thank you for uh, for asking that question because that is something I'm really passionate about. I'm really passionate about, um, as you as you use the term, bridging the gap or, um, you know, connecting people through pro wrestling. You know, pro wrestling is something that can really fit into anything. Uh, and I think that's where like WWE has been able to be so successful because actually um, WWE is a wrestling company. They are a wrestling company, but what they do is they insert wrestling into different kinds of uh, into different and you know it, it, into different kinds of uh, forms of entertainment into um, in, into uh, different kinds of programs. And I, frankly, I've always been really inspired by that. I find that part more fun than the actual wrestling itself, as far as um, um, what we're able to accomplish long term, and as far as like a fulfill, you know, as far as like a personal fulfillment. And I hope our wrestlers feel that way too. We have been able to promote wrestling, uh, um, Middle Kingdom wrestling, by having partners um, with. For example, in Nepal, in Nepal, we were able to do a pro wrestling event spotlighting the Belt and Road Initiative concept, which was introduced by the Chinese government, which is a, a, uh, a concept that is supposed to con connect interregional trade um, 
in a more efficient way. And one of the biggest partners of China is the country of Nepal. Uh, Nepal is an important, is in a really important strategic location as far as like between uh, in, in the West of Asia. So, you know, I have been really aided by these kind of uh, um, um, initiatives and especially anything that involves like growing infrastructure, uh, especially, uh, you know, China has had this uh, zero. Uh, one of the things that I really, really, really want to, uh, 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 I feel really passionate about is uh, eradicating poverty, which actually is amazing to see how far China has come in the last 10 plus years as far as how much growth and how, you know, how less, how much less poverty I've seen here. And the fact is that there has been an initiative to try to eradicate poverty not just in China, but outside of China too, especially in some of the less developed countries. So um, I think pro wrestling lends itself to being able to promote that message, to promote, uh, um, you know, development of, uh, um, you know, in uh, railroads and road and roads and paving roads and, 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 and providing a positive message out there. And wrestling fits in all of those things. Wrestling is not just, you know, feuds and storylines and all that kind of stuff. I think people get a little bit too caught up in, in, the, in that stuff. And I'm promoters and wrestlers. And I say, you know what? We got to look at the big picture here. And we have to tell other stories that actually, fans like wrestling fans excited or or getting your your colleagues excited but actually let's try to get the world excited about what we're doing and um i've been really 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 fortunate to have been able to have done wrestling shows um promoting the belt and road we've met the prime minister of nepal just through wrestling we're able to promote peace with the united states uh, state department in China, uh, as far as uh, it, it, like a sportsmanship cooperation between China and the United States, using what avenue? Using what? Professional wrestling. So I can go on and on about this. And um, I'm, I'm glad that you asked that question because if, if somebody hears that, what, what I have to say, there's one thing I feel very confident about is that you can fit wrestling in any, uh, positive uh positive progressive issue uh around the world and there's no there, there there's no bigger example of that i think than what we've done at mkw 100 percent, 100 percent. and again i tip my hat to what you guys are doing because it's working it's continuing to show the world what's possible and most importantly, you're continuing to hold up your end of the bargain as one of the top pro wrestling promotions on this entire planet, in this galaxy. I mean, literally, aliens in, in, in another vast world out there, if they're looking at Earth, they're going to see some Middle Kingdom wrestling going on here. Okay? And, and that sounds a little silly, but is it really? We don't know. Um, but I, I seriously, I tip my hat to you guys, though, because it's, it's something that's very important. And any time we can promote peace and togetherness. That's always a positive thing. That's always something that I am going to shout out and support because that's what I believe in personally. Um, Adrian, why don't you let everybody know what's the best way that they can keep up with middle kingdom wrestling, especially for folks around the world, where should they be going in order to get a better understanding of what's going on? Not only where you've been, but where you're going to be going. I would say the number one way to, to check out our video product, and I think that's probably what people are most interested in, is through our Middle Kingdom Wrestling YouTube channel. Um, that is the uh, the only uh, platform w where we release our videos outside of China. Um, you can check out our social media on Twitter, on Facebook, and Instagram. And we do have kind of like a separate... And that's another thing that I have to do is, you know, I have to oversee two different marketing campaigns. We have a China side 
we call, you know, there is a great firewall between China and the United States, and I would say the United States uh, and the international community, because there are two different, really two different internet infrastructures and uh, China's, uh, China has a completely different uh, video platform, social media platform. Um, and, you know, we have to make sure that we are promoting uh, MKW properly to a Chinese audience, while at the same time, also promoting MKW to an international audience. So, um, you know, if you guys feel compelled to see the way we also uh, operate inside China, um, we have, you know, we're on every single major Chinese social media platform as well. But yeah, um, as far as the international side, the the main ones, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, and uh, YouTube. Before I let you go, Adrian, you know, to, to celebrate my six-year anniversary of Duke Loves Wrestling, uh, I'm going to be putting together a, a special meal. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to go with uh, coconut curry uh, with some garlic in there and, and stir-fried vegetables, maybe some shrimp. Uh, but what would you add? What, what, what would be a, a quick and easy meal um, to add to to the spread here in order to celebrate six years of, of podcasting and collaborating with great folks like yourself? Wow. Um, is it okay if I order some uh, high, high non chicken? Sure, but you got to tell us what high non chicken is. <laughs> high non chicken is uh, one of my favorite one of my favorite uh, dishes in the world. And Hainan chicken is, uh, it is a uh, boiled chicken um, served with rice that has been cooked in the broth of the chicken uh, and with three, uh, with, with three kinds of sauces. One is a, a garlic paste. Another is like a kind of like a sweet and kind of like a, kind of like a teriyaki kind of thing, like a black paste. And then there's a, the chili, a chili paste. And that's Hainan chicken, it's boiled chicken served with uh, rice that's been cooked in the in the broth of the chicken with uh, the three sauces. And uh, that would be Hainan chicken. I love it. I know you're gonna come out with something that I was gonna say, what, what is that? So now I gotta go find some Hainan chicken. Um, it, it won't be the same as what you get over there, but I might be able to find something that's close to it here in Boston because we do have a strong Chinese community. So I'm going to be on the hunt because you just said that, Adrian. <laughs> sure, sure. I, I, and just to uh, narrow it down, narrow the hunt down for you. Um, Hainan chicken, although Hainan is a province in China, it is a province in China, Hainan. And, but believe it or not, Hainan chicken is uh, actually a more considered a Malaysian or a dish. Uh, it's very, very interesting history. So if I if I'm gonna get Hainan chicken, uh, the proper Hainan chicken, I'm not gonna go to Hainan, China to get Hainan chicken. I'm gonna go to Malaysia or Singapore to get the most proper Hainan chicken. That's not to say they don't make it good here. There are some some Malaysian and Singaporean restaurants, but I'm just it's a very interesting history. You just gave me a good detour there. Okay, so we, we definitely have Malaysian restaurants. So I need to, to go to one of them to get some of this high non chicken. Okay. All right. Now, at least I can come close to yeah. tasting what you're talking about. I love it. I love it. Listen, Adrian, six years, man. I appreciate your friendship. I appreciate what you're doing with Middle Kingdom Wrestling over in China. And I look forward to not only continuing to grow Duke Loves Wrestling as a brand, but I look forward to continuing to feature more of the amazing top stars over there at Middle Kingdom Wrestling. Thank you so much. And uh, promise me you'll have me on your uh, 12 year anniversary. You know what? I'm, I'm going to book you right now. You'll be my, my uh, featured guest for the 12 year for sure. <laughs> great. If you are a content creator and you want a great program that provides studio quality sound, especially when you're doing interviews, then I encourage you to check out Zencaster. That's right. Z E N C A S T R. It is my absolute favorite program to record with. I encourage everyone to check it out, okay? Visit Zencaster.com for more information. Enjoy. What a special conversation there with Mr. Adrian Gomez. My goodness. You know, what a way to 
kick off the sixth year of the Duke Loves Wrestling podcast, celebrate the anniversary by interviewing the guy who was my first guest ever. Such a good dude, too. Really appreciate Adrian and the whole crew over there at Middle Kingdom Wrestling China. You know, those are my friends there, and, and I have never forgotten about them. Always go back, always make sure that I'm highlighting all the great things that they're doing. And just like you heard there, I mean, the, the growth of this show coincides with the growth of that wrestling promotion. They are truly one of the top pro wrestling promotions in the world, and they have staying power, consistency, commitment to excellence, refusal to give up. I mean, this is all part of the the soup, so to speak, and this is why it continues to bubble up, continues to taste good as well, baby. You better believe it. That's right. You know, every year... Uh, this time is special because it it's a moment of, of reflection, right? Where have we been and, and where do we hope to go? And I got to tell you, in year six, this is going to be the most phenomenal year of the Duke Loves Rousing podcast. I have Hall of Famers, people who are still actively wrestling on TV. Of course, the young people still breaking into the industry and everybody in between. This is really, really going to be a special year for this show. And I really appreciate everyone staying on the journey with me because I'll tell you, the overwhelming support that this show receives from all over the world, it is just tremendous. I mean, I, I know I've said it before, but I, I got to repeat this here. Not only here in the United States, we're talking Brazil. We're talking Thailand, we're talking China, we're talking West Africa, I mean, literally Australia, all over the world, people listen to Duke Loves Wrestling. The craziest thing I saw, somebody in Iceland, what the heck is going on in Iceland? Somebody in Iceland is listening to the show, so whomever you are, I appreciate you 100%, thank you very much. We have a commitment here, you know? My job is to deliver some of the best conversations that you're going to hear anywhere, especially as it relates to pro wrestling and combat sports. And, you know, one of the ways that I do that is that I'm not going to ask the same questions that everybody else is asking. It's it, like, come on, you know, you know what I'm talking about. If the if the interviewer is not asking, OK, so who do you hate and, and what's the dirt and all that other nonsense there, then they're asking, well, where did you grow up? Who's your favorite wrestler? Who, who trained you? It's like, listen, that stuff is important, sure. But let's dig a little deeper, okay? Let's get below the surface level conversation and let's really figure out who is this person? This person who is spending their time to entertain others, they're making a living, putting their bodies on the line, or they're employing others who are doing this thing. I want to know the people behind the characters. And that's really what we focus on here on Duke Loves Wrestling. And hey, it's working because you folks keep listening, you keep sharing it, you keep talking about it online. <laughs> and it's, it's funny, you know, I get canceled every other week. You know, somebody's complaining about the fact that I have an opinion on wrestling. Um, but I'm very careful not to allow my opinion to bleed over into getting in the way of delivering some of the best content you're going to hear from any kind of wrestling podcast out there. You know, I want the sources, the actual people living through these actual things to be on the show and to let you know from their perspective what's going on. And I think that's important. You know, all of this nonsense about sources say and sources say, no, 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 no. Go straight to the horse's mouth. That way, there's no confusion, okay? At least you're getting it from someone who actually is living through this news. That's the point. You know, we lost someone recently who was part of our community here. Um, my goodness, the mad dog, Ken Johnson. This is a man who, when I interviewed him almost two years ago, he had just had his uh, one of his feet amputated. Okay, in fact, I mean, really, it was almost his whole leg because of diabetes. And yet Kenny was so, you know, joyous and full of life and mischievous. It was just such a fantastic conversation. And, you know, he really taught me a lot. 
Kenny had been part of our private wrestling group on Facebook as well, but just a really great guy, a guy who was trained by Johnny Valentine, and he was all over television for the WWF, for the NWA. You know, he helped train a lot of the young people, especially in the Texas territory. Just a good dude, Ken Johnson. And, you know, coming up, we're going to do a special on Kenny. I'm going to pull together some of his, his best friends from the pro wrestling world who can share some stories. And really, we're going to put a button on this because, you know, this his family, I know they're going to have some type of memorial and information if folks want to send well wishes or donate something or what have you here. I'm going to do it right. It's not going to be just a little blurb on this show. I'm going to dedicate an entire episode to Ken Johnson. So stay tuned for that. And, you know, let me just say this to anyone out there who has been impacted by Ken, especially those of you in the wrestling industry, especially those of you in the wrestling industry who are working for some of these big time promotions and you know who you are. I hope and I pray the rumors are not true. Okay. I hope some of you folks have not been so low that you didn't reach out to the family and, and provide condolences. I hope some of you, some of you are millionaires. I hope some of you didn't um, have the audacity not to put something in the pot, you know, donate something to the family, whether it be flowers or something like something. Give me a break. Don't act like you can't afford it. A lot of you folks out there, you forget where you came from and you forget who was, who's there with you during your journey to the top. It's sad and it's disappointing. But I'm going to assume that there's just a misunderstanding and that's going to get cor corrected. Okay? That's what I'm going to assume. I always assume uh, the positive stuff there. So I'll leave it at that. But when we do our Ken Johnson special, and that's going to be within the next couple of weeks, folks. If people want to name names, I'm not going to stop them. I don't look for the dirt. But if it happens, it happens. So everybody out there, just make sure that you're doing the right thing being respectful, especially those who have helped you get to where you are in your career in this industry. I'm going to leave it at that. We just had WrestleMania, which was fantastic. And of course, you know, the, the anniversary of Duke Loves Wrestling always coincides with WrestleMania, which is cool. We will have a WrestleMania special coming up. I'm going to let it breathe for a moment because I have a lot to say. I did ask Mo Muscles to do a WrestleMania special with me. So you're going to hear that next week. But for now, again, I wanted to have Adrian on and just kind of come full circle regarding our careers and what we're doing with our businesses and just how fantastic it is to find somebody that you can build with and support each other. You don't forget where you came from. You always support your friends. You always support the people who were there when you had nothing and you were a nobody. Listen, when I interviewed Adrian, I, I had like 20 people who were listening to my show. <laughs> You know what I mean? For him to even come on this show was ridiculous. But he had a promotion that really had not penetrated the American market yet, even though he personally is from here, right? So he was still trying to find his way as well. And again, we never stopped communicating. We never stopped building with each other. He shares my information. I share his information. And that's why we are where we are today as separate people who continue to collaborate, which is just fantastic. So... No one ever gets there on their own. And I want to leave you with this thought, everybody. No one ever gets there on their own. Find people who really are dedicated to seeing you succeed. One of the mistakes that I've made through the years, and it's something that, you know, people close to me have called out, and they're right. One of the mistakes I've made through the years is that I will go out of my way to boost, to share, to help Anyone and everyone out there, you know, especially these content creators, people who have podcasts and platforms and what have you, you'll constantly see me sharing their stuff, bigging them up, uh, making sure that the world knows who they are. And that doesn't always get reciprocated. In fact, very often it does not get reciprocated. And that's unfortunate. Now, I don't sit around worrying about who's here supporting me because the way I look at it, look, man. Just keep putting good out into the world and, and you'll be all right in the end. And certainly that's a fact. I have no real complaints. The show has been very successful. It's been worth my time. I love the community that we've built. 
when you hear some of the guests that we're going to have over this next year, you're going to understand it just, we're, we're on a different level, what we're doing and the type of respect and admiration that we're receiving all over. It's just, it's amazing. It really is amazing. And it, and it you know, it, it, it's touching. It's touching to know that you, you, you work so hard and people actually respect it and appreciate it. But let me just say this. And this is, this is something for everybody out there. If somebody is sharing your stuff, if somebody's bringing you on their platform and you're not returning the favor, what does that make you? Let me take it a step further. If you're the one who's always helping others and these same people that you help aren't turning around and trying to help you or asking you, do you have a suggestion on who I can help? It's time to focus your attention on others. You don't need to keep helping those folks. You don't need to keep sharing their stuff. You don't need to keep boosting them. You know why? (laughs) Because they're not helping you. And it doesn't have to be a one for one. But let me tell you something. If you always have your hand out, but you're not out there actually putting in, then why are you here? This isn't just a take. It's a it's a push and it's a pull. It's a it's a give a little, take a little. We 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 build together, just like Adrian over at Middle Kingdom Wrestling. You know, I never have to ask that guy to share my stuff. He never has to ask me to share his stuff. When he when he has a an idea and he's like, hey, you want do you want to interview some of my guys? We got black wrestlers over here, and I want to make sure they get highlighted. I say, hey, of course I will. Why wouldn't I? Right? But you folks hear me talk about Middle Kingdom Wrestling throughout the whole year build together. And that's just one prime example, but that's the earliest example, right? So my message to everybody out there, really think about that. If you are not sharing, if you are not trying to help those who share your stuff, who help you, then what's going on here? My audience, I have audience members who come on the show. Why? Because they they share my stuff, because they boost my stuff, because I respect you and I want the world to hear from you as well and encourage you to you know, also build your brand as well, especially if you have one or what have you. Why not? That's what it's all about. Do not forget where you came from. Do not forget the people who helped you get there. And over the past six years, I can absolutely say I appreciate each and every guest, each and every listener. Everyone that has ever commented on this brand and on this show online, man, so appreciative. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, kicking off <laughs> year six of Duke Loves Wrestling podcast, you know it. We're going we're gonna to stick with it, baby. Take it away, Tony Schiavone. This is Tony Schiavone, and we're definitely out of time on Duke Loves Wrestling. 